goes on for a long time. Oh yeah, and then we we ran into a few different people here. <gasps> that was that Sua? Oh, made Hazuki wear glasses. What? Wait. The me. I thought I had to click that. Oh, that was new. How's it going, everybody? Hoodlumut here, back with some more Chaos Head, Noah. And last time, we got an ending. We got an official ending. We got Silent Sky, which is apparently the most common ending. And it seems as though it's it, you actually have to get that ending before you can get any of the other endings, according to this guide that I'm reading. Um, as it says, it is required in order to access the rest of the game. So whatever that means. Um... So now, in this particular video, we are going, or, or, you know, until we get to the end, so however many videos that takes, we are going to be trying to do what is apparently called Ending B, uh, which is Crying Sky, and in order to do that, uh, I have to start a new game and then uh, view at least 10 of the following 18 delusions, and they kind of have it laid out here. I'm hoping I'll understand once I get in, because the... The way it's written is a little confusing to me, but um, uh, then I have to skip any route question prompts uh, by giving only yes answers. Because apparently now that I have went through the game once, there's going to be yes and no prompts to uh, like, what do you want to say? Like with certain delusions or whatever, I guess. And so I have to press yes for, for every answer. I have to give only yes answers. Um, and then I also have to avoid what is called the bad ending in chapter 6 by answering those questions correctly. So I'm assuming that that's when we're on the skyscraper, I'm thinking, or the on the top of that building, whatever it was. And we had to answer all those questions and not get pushed off the building. So hopefully I'll remember how to do those, but I should be able to save prior to that. So I don't have to worry about completely having to redo everything all over again. Um, so yeah, so I guess we're just going to try to run through this. I don't know how long this will take for me to actually get it. If I can do it in one episode, because I'm going to be skipping a lot of stuff we've already been through and I'm only going to be stopping at stuff that we haven't done yet. So, uh, Try to bear with me here as we try to barrel through this, but uh, let's just get into this, shall we? Uh, so E. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, that surely does do it. Okay. So can I just can I just slam on the E button? Will it stop me when I have to make a decision? We'll find out. Here we go. Uh... Whoa. Okay, um, wait a minute, <laughs> how do I answer this? Only yes, correct? Only yes, only yes. So I'm assuming this is part of the only yes, so only yes? Yes, we'll say yes. It's not a real school swimsuit unless there's a name tag on the chest. Okay. Uh, I'm assuming I picked that last time. So. Oh, right. Okay. So these are all just the things. Okay. So, yes. Oh, and I can't read that on the other end, so I'll read that after. Uh, a white school swimsuit? Get the frick out! Navy blue or nothing. Uh, yes? Okay, that's a lot. Okay, so hold on. So, uh, uh, I was, I definitely don't remember that anyway. If that's what we're talking about, then here's my take on it. The swimsuit glasses combo should be the default. Also, pro tip, there has to be a name tag on the suit. And the swimsuit must be navy blue. Everything else can screw off. Slow down, man, Lamau. You like girls with glasses? That's your type? Nah, they just pair well with swimsuits. <laughs> Usually you'd take your glasses off for swimming, right? But she doesn't. 
and that leaves all sorts of room for my delusions to work. Well, your libido is deaf at full throttle today, but that's what makes you you, Nidhart, lol. I should be disgusted. And yet, lol, 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 lol. Okay, I think we've seen all of this now. Uh, let's see if I can just skip. Oh, nope, I can't. Okay, so we haven't seen this then. Okay, good, good to know. Wait, go back. What do you mean, that's what makes you, you? I mean, yeah, I guess I went a bit crazy there. But I'm still trying to maintain a cool image for myself here. You? Cool? <laughs> what are you laughing at? Anyway, what were we talking about before I went AFK? It was probably just something to do with ESO. Did you seriously forget? There was an incident IRL recently. Okay, so that's gotta be it, right? And then I can skip. Yeah, okay, all this I can skip. Okay, so it didn't let me skip that, so apparently I hadn't seen that before. So let's wait until we get to a delusion. Oh, okay, it didn't let me skip this. So what's this? Sunday, 3 a.m. at cafe. Despite it being the weekend, the sounds of someone tapping away at a keyboard echoed throughout the building, undeterred by the late hour. Sitting inside room 37 was a boy, facing a computer monitor. The boy remained still and unmoving, and instead of sitting in the provided recliner, he sat in a wheelchair. <gasps> oh! Oh, this is, this is new! Okay, this is Shogun! Oh, okay! Wait, so is this because I hit yes? On all the swimsuit stuff? Like I was supposed to, or... Okay. Oh. Okay, he's he's reading... All of our stuff. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. This. The boy finally stirred ending his period of motionlessness. His eyes, hiding beneath his cap, pierced through the screen. A nearly inaudible whisper left his lips. This must be the new gen's next delusion. Ah. Uh, interesting. Okay, so this was all our conversation we had with Grimm, right? Once he was sure the user known as Grimm had exited the chat room, the boy began to take action, draping his wrinkled hands upon the keyboard. His mission was to get into contact with Nidhart, to warn him, and to strike fear into his heart. Ah... A distorted expression weakly crawled onto the boy's face. In that moment, his expression may have appeared pained to an outside observer, but in reality, it was quite the opposite. The boy was smiling. He had contacted Nidhart, and Nidhart had responded. A casual conversation to most, but a miracle to him. Ah, uh, right, because he's a delusion, right, to him? Interesting, yep, okay. Right, right. Huh. His hands suddenly froze. Remember. You may think you don't know, but you do. An enigmatic whisper, spoken as though it were directed toward Nidhart on the other side of the monitor. Returning to silence, 
he began typing once more, this time writing out a single mathematic formula. Oh, I didn't remember him writing that to us. I forgot all about that. Huh? Interesting. I did not remember that. Okay. Oh, yeah, he's just sending tons of images, right? Right. Hmm. I forgot he gave us the formula in the beginning. Wow, a lot of that first episode, or maybe first couple episodes, totally slipped my mind for stuff that happened later on. That's crazy. Nidhart failed to reply. From this, the boy deduced that Nidhart must have clicked on one of the links he had pasted again and again into the chat window. It might have been strenuous for Nidhart, but it was something that he had to show him at all costs. Are you frightened? Don't worry, that's good. That fear is what puts you on the path to awakening. Speaking those words to himself, he sent his final message. Whose eyes are those eyes? Yup. Whose eyes are those eyes? Without waiting for a response from Nidhart, he logged out of the chat room. A small sigh came from behind the wall, followed by a light knocking sound. Signs that the occupant from the room beside him had stood up from their seat, and before long, the door to his cubicle, room 37, was opened. Hmm. The girl didn't smile. Her expression remained grim as she took hold of the handles of his wheelchair. Were you able to contact the other you? Yes. His answer to the girl's question, which had been asked rather abruptly, was brief and concise. Still, being well attuned to the boy, the girl was able to sense a hint of tension in his tone. What happened? I was not the only one to come into contact with Nishijo Takami. It seems he may be under surveillance. I see. She didn't speak another word. She simply pushed his wheelchair toward the front of the cafe in silence. Ah, yep, okay, so that had to bend me, right? Okay. Yup, and then now we're back here, so I should be able to skip this, right? Yup. Interesting! Okay, so we got to see Shogun's side. That's cool. I still want to know if Miss Me right here is a freaking fake. I I need to know. Okay, so so this is another... This is, this is another thingy. Let's see. Uh, right, okay, I felt bad. We're supposed to stay neutral. So... We will stay neutral for this. I don't remember if I did the first time around, but uh, we'll just we'll read through it until we get to the end and then can speed through it. I felt bad about turning Miss Mikun down since he seemed so excited about it, but I really did not want to go. But even though I was trying my hardest to refuse, he just wasn't listening. Maybe we'll even see the murderer. They say the criminal always returns to the scene of the crime, right? Heh. <laughs> Maybe she'd pick you as her next victim. To atone for your sins, you must die. You know, that kind of thing. As for your sins, though... Hmm. Being a shut-in. <laughs> right, okay. So we were neutral, we were supposed to stay neutral. Okay. 
so we can skip all this because I believe I, I believe I did all this. Well, let, let's see. Let's go a little further. Uh, a shut-in? Uh, I'm not... Taking some offense at Miss Mikun's choice of words, I almost snapped back at him. But I quickly decided against it when I considered the possibility that he might get upset at me. So I just bit my lip and turned away. And when I did, I noticed that there was something written on the blackboard. Right, okay, so I remember this. So we did see this. We saw all this. Okay. Quick saved. Oh! More yes and no's! Huh? Interesting. So this is what they were talking about where stuff was sprinkled with yes or no's throughout then. Okay. It's just a coincidence. I'm assuming yes, it's just a coincidence. I'm making it up. It's all in my head. Uh, yes. The new gen killer is somewhere in this school. Oh, these are all like, this is all like from the building. So is this actually Takumi saying this or is this different? What? Wait. Wait. Wait a minute. Are you sure? So skip any route question prompts you might encounter along the way by giving only yes answers. Okay, I, yeah, I'll just keep saying yes. The new gen killer is somewhere in this school. Which would make sense. Th well, no, it wouldn't make sense. Oh, it would at the time, because wasn't, uh, no. No, I was going to say, I thought uh, Hazuki-san, she was always at A.H. Tokyo General Hospital, right? She never was a nurse at this school, right? I don't think. It's been a while since the first couple of episodes, so I don't think. So I guess we'll say yes, because it says to. Whoever wrote this is trying to provoke me. Uh, that part's true. That one we actually do know is true. <laughs> I should definitely erase it. Uh, yes. Okay, here we go. We're still in skip mode, I guess. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, okay, so this might be one of the ones that doesn't matter, maybe? So I can answer this however I want, right? So... Because this one doesn't start with what the guide is telling me it should start with, so we'll just stay neutral, I guess. And we've already done all this, right? So I can't... Oh, I can skip it. Oh, it does just let me skip it. Okay. Cool. Cool. Because that one didn't matter. That one didn't start with what it said it should have started with. So I should be able to keep going. Oh, this one maybe? Is it this one? Ah, it's this one. Okay, this one. Yup, yup, yup. Okay. So for this one, I'm supposed to stay neutral as well. Did I make this a red button? I don't think I did the first time. It's been a minute. I can't remember. I don't think I did, but we'll see. We'll, I'll know by the time I'm done here. <laughs> Shocked. I took a step back. On the other side of the crosswalk, standing among the crowd, waiting for the light to change, was the girl. And to make matters worse, the gaze beyond those glasses was clearly pointed straight at me. She didn't even try to look away. Her eyes were so intense. It was as if they were urging me to do something. And that, that should be it. That should be it right there. So I guess we'll we'll keep speeding along. Yeah, I've already done all this. So yeah, I think I did. I must have chose neutral last time too. Okay. And that should be it for chapter one for all the ones that seemingly matter. But it said that I can choose at least 10 of the following 18. So even if I screw up eight of them, as long as I get 10 correct, I should be okay. But I'll try to do them all the way it says anyway. Uh, so this doesn't matter either, right? So all this, I, I may as well just like do whatever and not read it, right? So, we'll just skip this, I guess. Because all this doesn't actually matter. Oh! Oh, I guess I didn't, I must have... 
Oh, oh, I, I forgot. Okay, so this was, um, I didn't choose neutral this for this one, did I? That's right. Okay, so some of these I forgot because some of these I did actual choices for, so I'll have to see. Shoot, I could have read that, but that's okay. We already probably read it in the past anyway, so we haven't seen this side of this answer. I think I, I think I clicked green for the delusion button or whatever, and that's when the whole swimsuit thing happens, so uh, at least I don't have to do that again yet. Um, okay, so let's just see what happens in this particular section. Was she going to ask me for one of my Sataton figures? If so, then she can screw right off. She had the gall to ask me to part with one of my waifus? <laughs> Ridiculous! Total insanity! There was nothing anyone could say, and there was no price anyone could pay to make me give up one of my Sataton figures. It wasn't freaking happening. If you want one so bad, go buy one yourself. Eee! While I was yelling at her in my head, Yuwa suddenly had a huge fall, landing flat on her rear. She rubbed her butt while on the verge of tears. Wait, is that it? Yep, that was it. Okay. So that was it. Nothing, nothing different happened there. So we just got to get through chapter one now. Just got to speed through all this. I think I think I'll just pick all the neutral options, regardless of if I've done them before or not. Um, and then we'll go from there. Man, I forgot how long this first chapter was. Dang. Goes on for a long time. Oh, yeah. And then we, we ran into a few different people here. <gasps> that was that Sua. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I forgot about that. Was that Sua? I'll have to slow it down in editing and see if it was uh, actually Sua or not. Hmm. Okay. All right. Well, we got this one. So I guess for each of the uh, delusions, I'll just reread some of them again. And, let, and, you know, whether they're important or not. And I'll decide whether I want to throw them in or not. All right. And then we got this one. This wasn't... Uh, yeah, we're not in Chapter 2 yet. So this one doesn't matter either. So this one... I remember for this one I did the... The bad... Uh... The, 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 the bad delusion. So we'll see what happens with the neutral delusion. My first physician had been some senile professor who was supposed to have some authority in the field. But I'd only seen him a few times. And after that, someone else had taken over. A student of his or something. Although, despite calling himself the other guy's student, he hadn't been particularly young. To be honest... He'd looked pretty old. The night before, I was reminded of something that doctor, Dr. Takashina, had said. This hospital isn't just for physical injuries, but also for mental ones. I hated hospitals, but that doctor had been very nice. He'd left a good impression on me, and I thought he was a good person. Well, even then, I'd still thoroughly fooled all the adults to the very end. That is, except Dr. Takashina. He'd seen through it all. And he was the one that declared me completely recovered. If I can... get him to examine me. I wondered what he'd say if he learned that I'd become an otaku freak. <sighs> nah, there was no way he'd remember me after all this time. Okay. So this is, I'm assuming, this is probably all going to be new here, right? I had to wait three hours before my name was finally called. It was a different examination room than the one from four years ago. But when I stepped inside, I was welcomed with a face I'd remembered dearly. The doctor was exactly what you'd think of when you imagined a kind old man. His face definitely looked older than most, yet also soft at the same time. And his demeanor only served to emphasize those qualities. 
He hadn't changed a bit since I'd last seen him four years prior. It almost made me wonder if he was physically incapable of getting any older. Though I'd never known his actual age in the first place. The desire for me to latch onto him and never let go became stronger and stronger. I could rely on him. He could save me. I felt incredibly happy to see him again. But the first thing that came out of his mouth was... How can I help you today? His voice was indeed gentle and filled with a kindness to calm the hearts of others. However, it didn't carry the same familiarity that it had back when I'd been visiting the hospital regularly. It felt like he was only interacting with me on a purely professional level. So I couldn't help but tell him my name. Um... Well, my Nishijo. Hmm? Ah, uh, yes. Introductions are probably in order. My name is Dr. Takashina. It's a pleasure to meet you. He bowed his head cheerfully. I was lost for words. It's a pleasure to meet you? That was what he'd just said. He'd completely forgotten about me. I shouldn't be surprised. It'd been four years, after all. But I'd... I truly believed that Dr. Takashina, of all people, would remember me. Maybe that was arrogant but I'd hoped for it all the same. So my heart was overwhelmed with loneliness and emptiness when those expectations were smashed to pieces. It felt like my very existence was being denied. Which is interesting because he's, he's not real, and we know that now. Oh man, that's probably why Dr. Takashina didn't notice him. He was used to the other Takami. Oh man. Oh, made Hazuki wear glasses, what?! Wait! Whoa! Wait! It skipped all that! Did I... I didn't do that before! Hello? Oh! So she wears glasses now because... It's whether or not Nishijo told Grimm that he prefers girls with glasses or not! I got you! Okay, so that's just- they just added that on to her face. Okay, so it's all the same stuff. We've been through all the same ropes and stuff, but but now she wears glasses. So I wonder if... I'm sure the dialogue didn't change, right? He would have said something, right? He, he already said it was a cute girl So uh, in the first route that we did. So he probably would have said the same exact thing, but it just depended on the choice that I made. So back then, when I didn't say that I cared about girls with glasses like that, Hazuki didn't didn't change to have glasses when she heard from the perspective of Grimm. Interesting. Okay. Huh. All right. That's that's fascinating. Okay, here's another one. Here's another one. The Hey Nied Heart one we're supposed to answer positively. So we will answer that one positively. Uh, I don't remember who's talking here, so we'll just make it up as we go. Hey Nied Heart, I'm always looking at you, you know? You aware of that? <gasps> That's right. Yeah, because this was the, the near near heart one. Wait, I did neutral the first time. That's right. And then, let's go to the two D world. I hadn't typed anything, and yet, near heart still spoke. Thinking it was just an optical illusion, I rubbed my eyes. But the message was still there, displayed in the chat. Go to the 2D world? <laughs> what was that supposed to mean? Even you can be a hero. We'll fight together. Are you... talking to me? 
You're not into 3D, right? You couldn't care less about it. Uh... Huh? Well, yeah, but... Nidhart was speaking to me. The player controlling him. What the crap? Did he have a will of his own after all? Place your hand on the monitor. When you do, you'll be able to enter Baselard as Nishijo Takami. The password is... Whose eyes are those eyes? But I refuse! If I get the opportunity to go to the 2D world, I'm for sure picking an Edoge! Are you kidding me? <laughs> Baselard is all yours, Nidhart. After replying, I used forced shutdown to turn off my computer. Interesting, okay. Huh. So the other one, he just was in reality, and he's like, nah, he would never talk to me, right? So that's funny, okay. Ah, okay, so this one, uh, I have to answer in the positive. And I don't know what's happening here, because I skipped all that, so we'll find out together. <sighs> Dang it! This was not the time. When had I first started feeling the gaze? I'd long since forgotten. It slithered its way into each and every part of my life, bothering the crap out of me all the way. There were a lot of things that disturbed my peace, but the gaze was right up there with Nanami as the most irritating thing I had to deal with. Fine then. Let's do it. The it'll take more than that to make me turn around game. Still fixated on my monitor. I tried to think of some cool lines you'd hear in a manga. Come on out! You piece of crap! Did you think you could pull the wool over my eyes? How incredibly naive. <laughs> Alright, let's see it. I know I didn't do positive this on this one. I did, uh... Pretty sure I did neutral. So let's see. Ah! You found me out! Of course I have! How many times have I told you not to stand behind... Huh? Was that a woman's voice just now? Goosebumps stood up all over my body. Had the reclusive owner of the gaze finally decided to show themselves? Was that even possible? Should I turn around and see who it was? But... What if she attacked me the moment I did? It was a fairly cute-sounding voice, but what if, in reality, a monster far removed from anything human was standing there? No, no, no. If that were the case, wouldn't that mean they were getting ready to attack me right now? If I didn't turn around now, I wouldn't even notice if they killed me. Maybe I should say something else to see if they'd respond. It was possible that the voice I'd heard was just a hallucination or a delusion or something. So that helped confirm it. And I mean, I talked to my Sedaton figure all the time in my head. It had to be the same thing. Who? <laughs> I tried to be bold and ask, Who are you? but I hesitated. If I was to provoke the attacker, it could have very easily spelled the end for me. It could have caused her to finally stop waiting and attack me. So many delusions ran through my head that I found myself completely paralyzed. What should I do? Maybe the whole thing was a product of my own design, and I was just being the world's biggest moron. I swear, if the owner of the gaze wasn't here, and I'd just been sitting here trembling in fear over nothing, I was going to kill my si- Huh? Uh, Taku? Why are you so tense? <laughs> oh, Frick. It really wasn't a hallucination or a delusion. There was someone right behind me. Startled, I reflexively turned around. 
Huh? Amy! Oh, yeah, this is before he liked her, right? This is, this, this is like when he thought she was a killer. Hiya! The, 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 the demon girl! The girl sitting on the sofa was undeniably the same one I had seen at the crucifixion crime scene. And now, for some reason I couldn't comprehend, she was just standing there, looking at me, smiling. Oh, frick. Oh, frick. Oh, frick. She'd finally come to kill me. It had to be because of the detectives I'd talked to. She'd seen me do it with her clairvoyance. After that, she'd infiltrated my base without making a sound, took up a position in which she could kill me at any moment, and now she was reveling in my fear as I cried and screamed in terror. It couldn't be anything else. D -d 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 don't kill me! I tried to scream, but I was too terrified to make a sound. Huh? A dose didgeridoo? <laughs> Tilting her neck to the side, the demon girl unleashed a strange incantation. It had to be some demonic tongue. She was cursing me! In hopes of gaining as much distance as possible from her, I went to hide underneath my desk. Problem was, I was so shaken that I ended up bashing my head into the edge of it, rendering me unable to move as I writhed in pain. <laughs> what are you doing, Taku? That was a crazy loud sound you just made. Bonk! <laughs> Even now, the demon girl was keeping up her amused smile. But it had to be a trap. One built to lure me into a false sense of security. The second I let my guard down, she'd swoop in and end me. Or maybe she already had with that curse she'd placed on me a minute ago. In a few days, my entire body would suddenly start spewing blood everywhere. And I'd die right then and there. Uh, I beg you, don't kill me. I got down on my hands and knees, cradling my head between my arms. Those freaking detectives had completely screwed me over. I, I, I'm sorry, I talked to the p police. So, p please. Huh? Huh? And even when I, I, I t told them everything, they didn't believe a, a word I said. It was a lie meant to buy me some time. The older detective had said he'd guarantee my safety. If he was doing his job properly, he had to have sent at least one officer over to my place. Upon thinking that, I suddenly realized... I'd given the old man my phone number, but I hadn't given him my address. Bishi! <laughs> Suddenly, the demon girl assumed a pose resembling a salute. And what was just as, if not more strange, was what she'd said. It was almost like a sound effect. Was it another demonic curse? You're gonna stop talking like that right now. Stuff like, ah, don't kill me, the police, or any other weird stuff like that. I've got no clue what any of it means. What? Was she just trying to play dumb? Or was this her roundabout way of threatening me? And in actuality, she was saying, forget the truth. Act as if nothing ever happened. What the heck was she thinking? Hadn't she come here to kill me? Come on, can you stand? Here, let me help you up. 
the demon girl got up from the couch and reached her hand out to me. Her expression was so gentle. And now that I was seeing her up close, she was actually pretty cute. <laughs> Darn it! I was letting her get to me! Stop acting like a freaking idiot! Was I seriously calling a demon pretty cute? She was a murderer. She'd used Yua and Shogun to trap me. And now she'd come to finish me off herself. Don't trust her. I'd already learned my lesson back with Yua. I'd never make the same mistake again. I refused to take her hand. Don't be deceived by this demon girl's smile. She was a demon trying to tempt me. If I gave in to that temptation, I'd die. Trust no one. Don't believe anything. Don't believe anything anyone says. B but... I, I saw... I, I saw y you c kill someone. Uh, um... Taku, don't you realize that's a pretty mean thing to say? Can't say I ever thought I'd get called a murderer. <laughs> what was she gonna do with me? Aren't you gonna k kill me? Just like with the guy in the fourth case. Was she gonna... For new gen? Or are you going to take me to where you and Shogun? You are Shogun? Who are those guys? Maybe the three of them had decided to work together. That way, I wouldn't be able to fight back when they beat me to death. N no! P please! A anything but that! Help me! Hmm. Okay. I promise to help you. As long as you stop treating me like a murderer. <laughs> so, so that was her true goal. Oh, come on. Don't freak out like that. You react like this to every other thing I say, and it always bums me out. P please. I, I won't tell... A single soul about you again. So please, l let me go. Hello, Taku? Could you calm down a little? This witch, acting like we were close or something. Calling me Taku and crap. Wait, actually, how did she know my name? She'd already known it back when we'd first met at the crucifixion crime scene. How? How did she know it? And also, how had she known where my base was? I mean, why wouldn't I? It only makes sense. Why I know your name, I mean. <laughs> had she just read my mind? I knew she was clairvoyant. She knew my name, my address, all because she'd used her powers on me. You sure do talk to yourself a whole lot, Taku. Then again, you've pretty much always done that. Always? How long was she talking? Wait, had I been talking to myself out loud just now? I hadn't been aware of it at all. Was that really true? Had I really, really, really been talking to myself out loud? Or was it possible that she was just lying to me, and in actuality, she'd read my mind? Why wouldn't I know your name, Taku? I mean, I know I'm not the greatest at remembering stuff, but... I always remember the names of my friends. Fr friends? Also, Taku, are you making fun of me? 
Sure, my test scores aren't that high, but... It kind of hurts when you say that sort of thing to my face, you know? Was someone here crazy? But who was it? Me? Her? C could you be... A, a transfer student? Oh yeah! Now that you mention it, there's apparently a transfer student moving into our class soon. Mr. Sukachin said something like that. There were two different conversations going on here. My terror from earlier, together with the anxiety of having no idea when I'd get killed, was starting to fade. But rushing in to replace it was a completely new kind of dread, slithering in to slowly erode my mind. Um... Hello? Judging by your face, I'm guessing you still don't believe me? Who... who are you? Who was she? A murderer. A demon girl. That was who. Wow. You can't even remember what your own classmate looks like? T I can't believe you. Did she say classmate? So we weren't just friends, but classmates too? Well, I guess I can't bug you too much about it. You don't come to school very often, after all. However, that doesn't mean you can just totally forget I exist. Have you really forgotten my name? There's no way. Come on, you have to know it. I know. You know. <laughs> the. Me. I thought I had to click that. Oh, that was new. The. Me. That's it! Right on the money. 50 yen to you, contestant. What? Yup, Saki Harabimi, reporting for duty. Wow, we, you really do remember me. Glad to hear it. Huh. How? Was it true? Was the demon girl's name really Demi? Why had that name suddenly popped into my head just now? Why did I know this girl's name? Maybe she really was my classmate and friend, and I'd just forgotten? No. No, no, there was there was no way. I'd never even heard of the name Sakihara Demi. It had to be a fake name. It had to be that when I'd said Demi, she'd just decided that'd be her name right then and there. It was like one of those spam emails from a Nigerian prince that used your personal info. Besides, other than Yua, I'd never met a 3D girl who'd talk to me like we were this close in my life. And Yua was the demon girl's underling. Wait, that was it? What the girl calling herself Sakihara was doing right now was exactly the same as what you had done. This temptress knew I wasn't used to interacting with 3D girls, so she was attempting to lead me into a trap by behaving all friendly and trying to seduce me. It was the same exact strategy. And the thing is, while I barely remembered my classmates' faces at all, and I didn't plan to either, I could say with absolute certainty that I'd never seen this girl's face in the same classroom as me before. Probably. <laughs> Darn it! I couldn't completely rule it out. After all, whenever I was at school, I was usually glued to my desk until the final bell, pretending to sleep, having delusions, staring at my desk, or feigning reading my textbooks. I didn't do anything else. 
I had next to no memory of my classmates' names and faces, so I didn't even try to remember any. Which was it? Was she telling the truth? Or was it all a lie? No. No, it, it didn't matter whether or not we were classmates. Because the one thing I knew for sure, the one hard, indisputable fact, was that she had committed murder. Are you really having trouble remembering? Did you get amnesia when you hit your head a little bit ago? <laughs> the demon girl reached for my head. I retreated back under the desk to try to avoid her. Taku, you're being weird. <laughs> I know. How about you ask Daichin? If you do, maybe you'll remember then. D Daichin? What the heck was that? Was that a person? Or some sort of secret code? Another demonic incantation? Come on! Daichin! Daichin! Miss me, Daisuke? Huh? She, she knew Miss Mikun's name? And not only that, but she was calling him Daichin? She wouldn't call him that unless they were really close. Hmm. Okay, just a sec. The demon girl reached for a bag on the sofa, a bag that wasn't mine, and took out a cell phone. Let's see. Daichin. Daichin. You should be... Alright, got him. Here you go. After a bit of fiddling with the phone, she held it out to me. When I made no motion to take it, the demon girl forced a smile and quickly grabbed my hand. Uh. Oh, come on, loosen up! She forced me to hold the cell phone. The demon girl's hand was soft, and just a little bit cold. I'd expected it to be a lot colder, almost like ice, but it wasn't nearly that bad. I guess even murderers had blood flowing through their veins. And because her hand was unexpectedly feminine, my heart started to thump. N no Don't fall for it! She's a demon. I'll never let her seduce me. I'm not into 3D. <laughs> Lend me your power, Sedaton! <laughs> Taku, have you not used a cell phone before? You're supposed to put it up to your ear. Tilting her head, the demon girl peered at my face from point-blank range. With her hand still grabbing mine, she brought the phone up to my ear. But before she did, I quickly looked at the screen. The registered name, Daichin, was displayed, and it looked like it was already calling them. With no escape, I pressed the receiver up to my ear. I heard the sound of the phone ringing. Eventually, that sound stopped, and in its place, whose eyes are those eyes? <gasps> Were they saying that to me? Or to the demon girl? Why had they said that? The person on the other end remained silent. They didn't say who they were. It sounded like they were downtown or something, as I could hear a bunch of noise coming through the receiver. I was so confused. My voice wouldn't come out. I had no idea what to say. Or so it goes. Did I use it right? I know that phrase is pretty popular nowadays. <laughs> Miss me, Kun. Or at least that's who I thought it was, quickly reverted to his normal tone. Okay, so what's up? Dimi? Dimi? Sakihara Dimi? 
Miss Mika knew her? Well, it wasn't like that was anything unusual. Miss Mikun was a natural-born playboy, after all. It wouldn't be surprising if he'd gone out with the demon girl in the past, or even if they were in a super intimate relationship now. That didn't matter to me, though. What I needed to know was whether the demon girl was my classmate or not. Taku, did Daichin pick up? The demon girl once again peered at my face. Crap, she was way too close. I turned my back to her and spoke into the receiver. It's Nishicho. What? It's Taku? You with Dimi? <laughs> Why had he responded so nonchalantly? Him acting so natural made it sound like m me being with the demon girl was an everyday occurrence or something. She dragging you along again? Man, you really got it bad. But do you mind if I give you a piece of advice? Go buy your own darn cell phone already. <laughs> Was the person on the other end really Miss Mikun? For example, there was the possibility that the demon girl had made a phone call to someone who only sounded like Miss Mikun. Maybe this person who sounded like Miss Mikun was just another underling of hers, and he was only pretending to be Miss Mikun in order to trick me. I was starting to doubt anything and everything. I didn't know what was true and what was a lie. Hold on. What the heck kind of trap was the demon girl trying to make me fall into anyway? Why bother with a trap this elaborate? In a situation like this, wouldn't it be easier and quicker for her to just go ahead and kill me already? Or was there some reason behind it? Some kind of prerequisite saying she had to trick me, even if it meant taking it this slow? No. No. Maybe it was some hidden camera type thing, spearheaded by Miss Mikun. The girl wasn't actually my classmate, but Miss Mikun's girlfriend, and he'd sent her here in order to screw with me. As freaking if! If that was the case, how the heck would I explain everything that happened at the crucifixion crime scene? So, what's up, Taku? Though, to be honest, I can't say I'm all that happy to be getting a call from a dude. <laughs> His tone of voice sounded exactly like Miss Mikun's. The more I heard the more convinced I was that the person on the other end had to be him. You looking for advice on how to seduce chicks or something? <laughs> As if you'd call me up about that. <laughs> Should I start talking? I sensed a gaze on my back. The girl was staring at me. The chills on the back of my neck still hadn't gone away. What kind of expression was the demon girl making? I wanted to turn around and see for myself, but I was too scared. Okay, seriously, what is it? I'm with a girl right now, so make it quick. Uh, um... Uh, I... You what? Hurry up and spit it out! Uh, our... Our? Class. Yeah? What about our class? I in it. What's in it? A girl. Who? T -t Sakihara is her name. Despite steadily becoming more and more incoherent, I somehow managed to explain myself. <laughs> Suddenly, Miss Mikun stopped responding. Silence. However, I could still hear the noise of the city around him, so the call hadn't disconnected or anything. Why wasn't he talking? <sighs> the next thing I heard was an extremely exaggerated sigh. 
Look, you sure you haven't got gamer brain or whatever? What? Where'd that come from? And not only was it completely out of left field, but he'd brought up that bullcrap condition that'd been coined despite having no scientific backing whatsoever. You're talking about Demi, yeah? You're calling right from her phone, so I don't understand where all this stupid crap is coming from. <laughs> oh, I get it now. Demi put you up to this, didn't she? This a prank? You two trying to pull one over on me? Alright then, give Demi a message from me. Tell her I'm not stupid enough to fall for your garbage pranks. Is she really... Hmm? Is she really what? Is she really our classmate? Dude. Look, <laughs> I get that you barely come to school, but did you seriously forget? Are you really that far gone? Forget me. You've been in the same class with her since the first year of high school, if I remember right. I mean, come on! The three of us saw a movie together pretty recently. I couldn't comprehend what the person that sounded like Miss Mikun was saying. He'd said that the demon girl and I had been in the same class since first year, and that the three of us had seen a movie together pretty recently. Pretty recently? But... When exactly? We wouldn't have become pals if it weren't for Demi. I was hanging out with her when we met. After all, she and I mesh real well together. You know, with how whimsical we both are. This world's pretty huge, but even then, Demi and I are just about the only ones who'd bother talking to a neat like you. Whoops! <laughs> that might have been a bit harsh. <laughs> The words I heard on the other end of the call. Not a single one of them felt real to me. I had absolutely no memory of any of it. I couldn't acknowledge that any of that had happened in the past. I just couldn't. It was all some story that the person who sounded like Miss Mikun had made up. It couldn't be my past. The past could only be established as truth if a person remembered it. So if I didn't remember it, it wasn't true. Well, while we're at it, I've been meaning to say that Demi doesn't really act like much of a girl at all, does she? Kinda throws me off. But, uh, don't tell her I said that. <laughs> Who are you? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Have you seriously lost it? If you've forgotten even me too, then you really have been playing too many games. <laughs> Unable to take it anymore, I hung up the phone. <sighs> My breathing had grown extremely heavy without me noticing. The sweat that had been beating on my forehead showed no signs of stopping. In fact, it was increasing. Long trails of sweat trickled down my entire body, starting from my face and ending at my feet. Taku, you're covered in sweat. The demon girl, looking worried about me, calmly offered me a handkerchief. A cute, patternless, vermilion handkerchief. There was a faint floral scent to it. Instead of taking it, I attempted to somehow maintain my composure and organize my thoughts about everything that was happening. But in the end, it didn't go too well. I was doubting anything and everything, causing all my thoughts to rapidly churn together into a chaotic whirlpool. Sign in minor disappointment the demon girl put away her handkerchief, and then, with a triumphant look on her face, 
she asked me a question. So, what Daichin say? She was acting like she already knew the answer. I couldn't afford to answer her. What was she? An ordinary classmate of mine? Or a monster? I had no idea. Maybe I was the crazy one. Taking the chat with Shogun into consideration, I couldn't rule out the possibility that someone other than myself was controlling my body. Or maybe all my memories of the demon girl, of the girl named Sakihara Themi, had somehow gotten knocked right out of me due to some freak accident or something. At this point, I didn't know anything about myself for sure. Did I have amnesia? Did I sleepwalk? Or could it be something else entirely? Are you okay? If you're not feeling good, you could try lying down on the sofa. The demon girl spoke to me kindly. Don't let your guard down. Anyone who acts nice to an otaku freak like me must have some kind of ulterior motive. I shook my head, putting my strong will to resist against the demon girl on full display. Then, using that same strength, I raised my head. Sweat got in my eyes blurring my vision. The demon girl's face was a lot closer than I'd expected it to be. What color eyes were those? Why? Hmm? Why what? Are you here? Why? Because I came to see you, duh. Are you mad that I came in without asking? Then again, that's totally your fault for not answering. I was knocking for a really long time, you know. <laughs> I thrusted the cell phone she'd given me back at her. As I watched the demon girl timidly take it back, I asked her once again. Why? Hmm? What is it this time? Are you here? What was her reason for coming here? If she'd come to kill me, she would have done it a long time ago. So why wasn't she doing anything? Oh, you want to know why I'm here? Just a sec. The demon girl reached into her bag and pulled out a single sheet of paper. This is why. I brought you the worksheet asking about what you want to be when you graduate and stuff. So here, post-graduation aspirations. I found myself taking it from her without really thinking. She wasn't lying. The piece of paper did have post-graduation's aspirations written on it, along with three blank spaces to write your answers in. Was that it? Was that really all she'd come for? G go home. <sighs> I don't want anything to do with her. I don't want anything to do with any 3D girls. This is a trap. Don't listen to her. This isn't reality. This is a game. One filled with bugs. There are way too many contradictions. It doesn't hold together as a proper story. Stay away from me. If you don't intend to kill me, then just leave me alone. I am me. Some me that isn't me may be friends with Sakihara Dimi, but that me has nothing to do with the current me. Cradling my head, I closed myself off completely. I kept trembling and trembling, envisioning that the girl known as Sakihara Dimi wasn't there anymore. Not long after, I heard the sound of the door opening, telling me that the demon girl had left. <laughs>